Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are being held in a cave on Pluto by two criminals who plan to dispose of them. Now the Commander and Happy have managed to get to a spacephone in the cave. All the meters check, Happy. There's nothing wrong with the spacephone after all. That's great. We can have a whole squadron of space patrol ships out here in a few minutes. This is an emergency call from Commander Corey to Pluto City Space Patrol Unit. Send ships to Sector G-18. Look for my ship, Terra-5, grounded near a steep bluff. Professor Walker, Cadet Happy, and myself are being held by... Look out, Use the ray gun quickly! I want to get Corey permanently! We'll return in just a moment with today's Space Patrol adventure, The Prisoners of Pluto. Hiya, gang. This is Captain Dick Tufel speaking. I'm just having myself a stroll down the street before I turn in for the night. Uh-oh, what's that light blinking in the window of that house across the street? Say, I'm going to investigate. That light's a signal, and it's a space patrol code system. It says, be sure to tell the boys and girls how to get a space patrol pocket projectoscope. Hey, that's a real projectoscope that boy's signaling with. Gang, I'm going to get him to tell you all about his projectoscope because you can have one, too. I thought that'd bring you running, Captain Tufeld. Come on in. Boy, am I glad I sent for this projectoscope. It's really something. Tell the gang all about it, Space Patroller. Well, kids, it's not only a keen signal light. You can use it as a film projector in a dark room. Watch me flash pictures with it on the wall, Captain. There. See that picture? That's a picture from a Space Patrol adventure called Mighty Meteor. And it comes with your projectoscope on a strip of film with three other swell stories called Space Pirates... Men from Mars and Robot Invasion. And Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy are in them, too. And, gang, on this one film, there are 24 different pictures. The projectoscope's a real flashlight, too. A flashlight in the shape of Buzz Corey's rocket ship. And it's a winner for looks. A neat six inches long, made of smooth, tough plastic, with four big tail fins and a one-inch radar antenna. Just think, a signal light, flashlight, film projector, and model rocket, all in one. Gang, to get an official Space Patrol projectoscope, complete with bulb, battery, and film, do this. Buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks, the cereals with a wonderful magic space picture on the inside. And then, with your name and address, send 35 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 35 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Prisoner of Pluto. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have been in Pluto City awaiting the arrival of Professor Malcolm Walker, who is from another city on this outer planet. Deeply concerned over the professor's failure to arrive, Buzz has ordered patrol ships to search the dark, constantly frozen surface of Pluto. Several hours later, Buzz and Happy join in the search, scanning rocky crags and valleys of frozen air with infrared probe rays from their ship Terra 5. Finally, Buzz sees the wreckage of a small lab ship at the base of a long slope. Now, in their spacesuits, Buzz and Happy are climbing the slope in order to investigate the wreckage. The ship doesn't look too badly damaged, Commander. Even a tiny hole in the hull would be serious damage here on Pluto, Happy. Unless Professor Walker managed to get into a spacesuit, the intense cold and lack of air would finish him in a few seconds. There doesn't seem to be any sign of life, sir. I don't see any lights in the ship. Let's get the hatch open. Focus your atomic light over here, Hap. Yes, Commander. I'll go in first, Happy. Be ready to open that first aid kit. If the Professor's still alive, we'll have to work fast. It's ready, sir. Secure the outer hatch. Hatch secured, sir. Well, he's not in the control section. Want me to check the aft compartment, sir? All right. He may have sealed himself in after the crash. Hey, wait. What's this on the control panel? That looks like a note, Commander. Hold your light on it. 
Ship crashed due to instrument failure. Spacephone equipment damaged by crash. I am not hurt. Two hours after crash, I thought I saw a flash of light due west. Since rescue at this position is unlikely, I've gone to investigate source of light. I shall appreciate finder of this note relaying this information to Commander Corey of the Space Patrol, who is now in Pluto City. I'm carrying a projector scope and an atomo light. Professor Malcolm Walker. Professor Walker should have stayed with the ship. Well, it's good to know he wasn't hurt. But I wonder what caused that flash of light he saw. There's nothing out here in this part of Pluto, unless another search ship has landed here. I believe the light was probably a reflection in the frozen air that covers the ground. A reflection from a ship far above this planet. Well, if Professor Walker took an atomo light with him, it shouldn't be too hard to find. Let's get back to our ship, Happy. We can head due west at low altitude and see if we can locate him. Right, sir. First, just to prevent any further wild chases all over Pluto, I'll add to this note in the event he returns here. I'll ask him to remain in the ship. Just a minute. There he is on the sled, just like I told you on the space phone. Found him unconscious, almost tripped over him in the dark. All right. Let's lift him out of this airlock. Uh, uh, say, didn't you jump any more frozen air, Orman? Uh, that first load will hold us until we find out who this guy is. Uh, just set him down here. Uh, well, anyway, he isn't with the Space Patrol. Yeah, his suit says United Planets Research Foundation. Hmm. What kind of a research would he be doing out here? His eyes are open now, Hagel. Open his face, please. We'll find out who he is. Wait, Roman. Chances are he's just lost. If we didn't arouse his suspicion, we can keep him here until our supply ship arrives next week without any trouble. And then what? Then we will turn him over to the boys. They can get rid of him out in space. Yeah, okay. All right. Open the face, please, and I'll do the talking. Just take it easy, my friend. We'll have you out of that spacesuit in a moment. Thank you. My heating unit went out. I guess I'm lucky you found me. Yeah, you certainly are. Uh, how do you happen to be on this part of Pluto? My lab ship crashed a mile or two from here. Mm -hmm. I'm Professor Malcolm Walker with the United Planets Research Foundation. Mm -hmm. Mr. Um... Uh, Hagel. I'm a geologist. I see. I wonder if you would let me use your spacephone to contact a friend of mine in Pluto City. He's probably worried about me. Well, as a matter of fact, we're having a little trouble with our spacephone transmitter. As soon as my partner can repair it, we'll be glad to let you send a message. Thank you. Of course, it may take several days. Several days? Yes, yes, you see. We don't have much spare equipment here, but our regular supply and relief ship should be here in about a week. You will be able to go back with them. Well, it's rather inconvenient and who... But what am I complaining about? Here I am, recently saved from certain death, and I'm fretting about spending a few days in a warm cave with congenial companions. <laughs> I understand exactly how you feel. Oh, by the way, was my projectoscope signal light on when you found me? Uh, signal light? Uh, no, just the regular atomo light, and it was turned on. Oh, good. And there may be a chance that a search ship will see the other light. I remember dropping it just before I collapsed. I'm afraid I was so numb with cold that I don't remember exactly... You had a signal light? Yes, as I said... I see. Uh, Professor, if you'll come with me, I'll get you something to eat. I'm sure you must be quite hungry after the ordeal you had. If you just go into the next room and make yourself comfortable. Uh, right through the door. I'll be right in. Thank you, Mr. Hagel. I'm most grateful. Oh, you're entirely welcome. Oh, uh, Rorman, could I speak to you for a moment? Yeah, Hagel, what is it? Well, I'm afraid you'll have to go out again and get some more air, after all. Go out there again? Yes, please. Uh, the old fool has dropped the signal light. You will have to find it before a search ship spots it. Now get going. Uh, signal light, that's all we need. Yeah, hurry. Uh, I'll prepare a snack for our guest. Well, there's not a sign of anybody down there, sir. Keep your eye on the viewscope, Happy. The professor couldn't have gone much farther than this on foot. He'll circle back and cover the area again. Well, he may not have headed due west after all, sir. Shouldn't the infrared beam have picked him up by now? Unless he's fallen into a crevice. Yeah. yeah then that would account for our not seeing the lights he said he was carrying. It doesn't look too good. You better send for more search ships. Space upon Pluto City, Happy, but still keep an eye on the viewscope. Yes, sir. Cadet Happy aboard Terra 5 calling Pluto City Space Patrol. Could that happen? Hold on a minute, Hap. Check your transmitter settings. Yes, sir. Seems all right to me. Oh, 
Oh, I forgot about the new double scrambler circuit. You were on two frequencies, Pluto City and Terra Headquarters. Yeah, I'll have to watch that. Terra would probably wonder why we were bothering them with a Pluto search problem. A double <laughs> scrambler is a good security measure, Hap. We can send the same message in two different codes, and no outsider listening in can tell it the same message is being sent. Now, well, I've got it set for Pluto City alone now, Commander. Fine, Hap. Smoke and rockets. There's a projector scope light, Commander, down there on the ground. That must be Professor Walker's light. Happy, hold that call until we can land and do some investigating. All right, Commander. Why doesn't he turn it back on? He must have seen our ship lights. Well, we've got a rough check on the location. It shouldn't be difficult to find them now. Well, that didn't take you long. Any luck, Rorman? Where's the professor? He's in the next room eating. I found the light. It uh, fallen into a narrow fissure in the rocks. Was it, huh? Yeah. It's pointing downward. I doubt if it could have been seen from his ship. Certainly had a close call at that. What do you mean? Just as I was picking up the light, I caught a glimpse of a spaceship's light over to the north. Quickly shut off the light. Are you certain they didn't see the light? I'm almost certain. They'd have had to be looking right at it. Anyway, they wouldn't see anything out there now, even with their brightest atomic search beams on. You're right. They never see the airlock opening unless they landed and stood right in front of it. That was a delicious supper, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Oh, you're quite welcome, Professor. Uh, now, if you'll come with me, I'll show you. Uh, you're... Well, you won't give us any trouble for a few hours. You asleep? Yeah, dropped off the moment he laid down. Look, Hagel, why can't we get the supply ship here quicker? We can space phone them tonight. That would be pretty stupid, Rorman, with search ships flying around this area. In a week, they'll have given up the search. Then it will be safe for the supply ship to land. Oh, I'm sick of hiding out in this cave. We've been here ten months. Surely the space patrol isn't still looking for us after all that time. Well, I'd rather be here than in some space patrol detention center undergoing suspended animation. Yeah, to... I'd like to know how this differs from suspended animation. <laughs> Listen, you hear that? Sounded like somebody in the airlock. Pagel, look. Sorry if we startled you. I'm Commander Corey of the Space Patrol. <laughs> yes, Commander, we were startled. You see, we weren't expecting company. We're looking for Professor Walker. Professor Walker? Why, there is no one here but my partner and myself. Professor Walker's lab ship crashed near here. Yeah, we found a note that he was headed in this general direction. Oh, then he probably went right on past our airlock. <laughs> we often miss it ourselves. Well, I don't imagine he's very far away. You're sure you haven't seen him? Oh, no. no we haven't seen anyone. Have we, uh, uh, Mr. Evans? No, 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 of course not. Well, in case you hear anything about him, would you please notify the United Planets Research Foundation? The United Planets Research Foundation? I see. If you forget the name, you'll find it engraved on this projectoscope you have here on the table. Projectoscope? This one, Mr. Hagel. Hagel? I don't believe I told you my name. You didn't. You looked familiar to me when I first came in. I just recalled where I'd seen your picture. And where was that, Commander? We have a method of remembering faces we see in the Space Patrol wanted files. I don't believe I understand. Well, it's very simple, but I'm not going to explain it now. If Professor Walker isn't here and you haven't seen him, how do you happen to have his projectoscope? Rorman, get them. <laughs> Commander! Stay where you are, Cadet. Nice work, Rorman. I saw the commander edging toward the projectoscope. I couldn't grab it in time. Oh, it's probably just as well. Corey and the cadet have forced our hand. Now we'll have to play it safe. Lock them up. We'll get rid of them and the professor, too. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Hi, gang. This is Captain Dick Tupel speaking from the Interplanetary School Stadium on Terra. I just saw a swell baseball game here. Listen to that crowd cheer the winners. Yes, it sure is fun when you're a winner. And here's something like that. But remember, to be a winner, you have to get supercharged. And here's the way to take care of that. Eat a good breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks. The bite-sized super cereals that help to supercharge you. Delicious! And there's plenty of zing in that Rice Chex flavor. And man, oh man, Rice Chex biscuits are toasted and toasted to make them crisper and crisper. And Wheat Chex? Ah, there's a flavor you'd fly to the moon for. Now, gang, remember, it's fun to be a winner and hear this. 
So move right up and be a winner. Move right up to the breakfast table for the breakfast that supercharges you. A power breakfast with the super cereals, Rice Chex or Wheat Chex. The cereals with Buzz Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside. And the wonderful magic space picture on the inside. And now back to today's Space Patrol adventure, The Prisoner of Pluto. Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy have been led to a secret cave on the dark, frozen planet Jupiter by a projectoscope signal lamp dropped by Professor Walker when he collapsed in his spacesuit near the cave airlock. Confronted by the commander, the two criminals, Hegel and Rohrman, first denied they had seen the professor. But when Buzz discovered the professor's telltale projectoscope, the two fugitives rendered Buzz and Happy helpless with a paralyzer ray gun. Now, still under the effect of the paralyzer rays, Buzz and Happy have been carried to a cave room next to the one in which Professor Walker lies sleeping. Okay, come on, let's get going. Paralyzer ray ought to hold them for another half hour. That'll be plenty of time. Did you hear that, Happy? Yes, Commander. Try moving your arms and legs. I've already tried, sir. And the paralyzer ray seems to have worn off. Good. Our spacesuits protected us from the full effect. Let's try to locate a spacephone and alert Pluto City. How about the spacephones in our spacesuits? Remember, we're inside a cave, and a long distance from Pluto City, the signal won't carry. No, that's right, sir. Well, well Hegel must have a spacephone in here. We'll search the cave first and find Professor Walker. Then we'll see what we can do about a spacephone. Professor? Professor Walker? Oh, wake up, Professor. Huh? What? What's going on? Who are you? I'm Commander Corey of the Space Patrol. Yeah. Of course. Uh, Commander, am I still in the cave? Yes, Professor, you are. Well, that's a relief. I'm afraid I owe Mr. Hegel and Mr. Rohrman an apology. You do? Yes. For a brief moment a while ago, I, I suspected them of trying to keep my presence here a secret. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? I suppose it was due to my fatigue and fear after cracking up. Now listen, Professor, there isn't much time. Your suspicions were correct. Hegel and Rohrman are criminals. What? The Space Patrol has been searching for them for months. You happen to stumble on their hideout. Then you've captured them? Mm, not yet, but we will. We'll need your help. Where's the spacephone? Spacephone? Why? Uh, they told me it was out of commission. Well, I'll bet they've got a spacephone around here somewhere, and in good working order, too. Well, we'll check. Professor, better get your spacesuit on. Be ready to move out of here in a hurry. I certainly will, Commander. Come on, Happy. We'll try to locate Hegel's spacephone. Uh, get this stuff down here. We can store it away later. Okay, Hegel. Say, <clears throat> so this is a real hole. We got quite a load of supplies out of their ship, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we sure did. Now, let's get the three of them and put them on Corey's ship. Uh, have your ray gun handy. We may have to give them another blast. All right. Uh, are you sure you can make this ship crack up look like an accident? Oh, just leave it to me. We'll take Corey and the cadet to the ship first. Then come back for the professor. Wait. My orders. I hear voices in the space of phone room. Be quiet. I'm going to open the door. All the meters check, Happy. There's nothing wrong with this space phone. Great. We can have a whole squadron of space patrol ships out here in no time. Well, here we go. Emergency from Commander Corey to Pluto City Space Patrol. Send a patrol unit to Sector G18. Look for my ship, Terra 5, grounded near Steep Bluff. Professor Walker, Cadet Look out, Happy, Commander. myself are being held captive. Roman, bless them with the ray gun, quickly! <laughs> uh, that takes care of them. Switch off the space phone. We got to get them to the ship in a hurry now. Space Patrol Pluto City calling Commander Corey. Message for Hegel, they heard you. Mm -hmm. We have established a fix on your location in Sector G18. Rescue ships will be dispatched immediately. Space Patrol Unit Pluto City out. Confound it. Hegel, what are we going to do now? We can't wreck Corey's ship. Those rescue ships would eventually locate the cave. How can we contact Jackson and Trask? Maybe they can get here before the Space Patrol arrives. We can do better than that. We can get away from here in Corey's ship. Yeah, but who's going to pilot it? Where will we go? You don't know, Astrogation, neither do I. Oh, I can get it spaceborne. After we're off Pluto, we'll wait till Corey and the cadet come out of the Reagan effect. Then we'll force them to take over and take us to Mars. Yeah, but what about the professor? Well, if we take Corey, we'll have to take Walker, too. He'll be a good protection for us in case we're intercepted before Corey revives. All right. Let's get him into Corey's ship. It won't take long for the patrol ships to get here. 
We'd better be gone when they do it. Happy. Happy, are you awake? Huh? Yeah, I mean, yes, sir. Hey, where are we? Aboard Terra 5. Commander, you got us off Pluto. Now, the last thing I remember was having Hagel and Rohrman surprise us when we were using the space phone. How did you manage to get us away? I'm afraid I didn't. Hagel and his partner put all three of us aboard our ship. Oh, okay. Commander. Uh, yes, Professor? I uh, don't suppose you know where they're taking us. No, I don't. Do you? To Mars. They were talking after they used the ray gun on you and the cadet. To Mars? Why would they risk discovery by blasting off in my ship? Well, you see, the Pluto City Space Patrol unit replied that they had established a fix on the cave and were going to send rescue ships immediately. What? I don't see how that's possible. Hegel and Rohrman got us before we established contact with Pluto City. Besides, they couldn't have plotted a fix that fast. It was my voice they heard. Your voice, Professor? Yes, I, I saw them watching you, and I, I knew they'd never let you complete the call. So I used the transmitter in my spacesuit to make them think you'd succeeded. Perhaps it wasn't such a good idea. I'm not so sure. At any rate, it was very quick thinking, Professor. But it didn't have the effect I hoped it would. I thought perhaps if they thought their position was hopeless, Hegel would surrender without harming us. Well, at least it got us off Pluto, Professor. Yeah, but we're still their prisoners. And we've still got a chance. Yes, I hear somebody in the next compartment. Oh, you've come out of it, eh? Come on, Commander. You and the cadet have work to do. And if we refuse? Roman and I can easily find a way to change your mind. All we want you to do is to plot an astrogation vector that'll take us to Mars. Can't you do it? I wouldn't be asking you if I could. There is a lot about this ship that I don't understand. And listen, Corey, don't try any tricks. I'll know Mars when we're close enough to see it. And don't forget, whatever happens to this ship happens to you too. All right, Hegel. Okay, up to the control compartment then. Professor, you'll stay here. All right, Hegel, there you are. We're on automatic control now. We ought to reach Mars at about 2300 universal star time. And you swear that the vector you said keeps us off the regular space lanes? I said it did, didn't I? I'm going to watch that you scope, Corey. And if another ship appears following us, you'll regret it. Well, can we help it if, if somebody sees us accidentally? It'll be up to both of you to avoid that accident. Yeah. Now look, Corey. I want my men to meet us on the Martian plane and pick us up there. Turn on that spacer phone so that I can contact them. There are no tricks on this either. I don't know how this thing works, but I do know when the scrambler circle is set to the right combination. And which one is that? Scrambler code 31567. Now set it. All right. That's it. Now cut on the transmitter. This is Hagel calling Jet Trask at Saturn City. Hagel calling Jet Trask at Saturn City. I hope he and Jackson are near the receiver. Hagel, spaceborn out of Pluto, calling Jet Trask at Saturn City. Maybe Corey's trying something fun. The space phone's on, don't worry. Hagel to Trask. Trask here. Go ahead, boss. Uh, Trask, listen carefully. I got a job for you. How did you get off Pluto? I thought Just were... listen. I want you to take a ship and meet me on the Martian plane, Sector 5G. We'll be there at about 2300 Universal Star Time. Got it. I'll be there. I'll be aboard Commander Corey's space battle cruiser, the Terra 5. You'll be what? Hey, listen, are you making a deal with Corey? Don't be a fool, Trask. If I were double-crossing you, would I use Corey's ship? I've got Corey and his cadet and Professor Walker here at the ray gun point. Okay, Hagel. I'll pick you up at Sector 5G, Martian plane at 2300 hours, Universal Star Time. All right, Trask. Hagel out. Cut it out, Corey. Roman, take Corey and the cadet back to the compartment. We'll bring them out again when it's time to land on Mars. Nice landing, Corey. And now this is where we say goodbye. Yeah, we'll miss you. You won't miss a thing from now on. Yeah, this is it. For all three of you. Yeah, let's finish them before Trask lands so we won't waste any time getting away from here. There's just one thing I want to do first, Hagel. Yeah? What is it? This! Get him happy while they're off balance! 
Well, well, I guess that takes care of our friends, sir. Get their weapons, Happy. Foreman, why didn't you watch Corey? How did I know he was going to jolt the ship with a rocket blast? Anyway, maybe Trask can help us. That's right, Corey. The lurch you gave the ship will tip him off that something's wrong. He'll get us out of this. I think you'll find that Trask is having troubles of his own. Have a look in the view scope. Space patrol ships. That's right. Where did they come from? You told them where to find us, Hegel. I did? Yes. When you were talking to Trask on one scramble frequency, the same message was being sent out on the regular space patrol emergency frequency. Happy, take them back aft and lock them up. And ask the professor if he cares to join us. Right, sir. All right. Come on, you two. Be our guests for a change. <laughs> An action preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure in just a moment. And now, gang, here's Cadet Happy to tell you how you can have fun ten different ways with that swell new Space Patrol projectoscope shaped like a rocket ship. Number one. Show pictures on the wall with it. Two. Use it as a flashlight. Three. Give signals with it at night. Four. Hide secret messages inside of it. Five. Play Space Patrol with it. Six. Light it in a dark room. Looks like a rocket flying at night. Seven. Wire it on your bike for a new and different kind of ornament. Eight. Keep it to dress up your room. Stand straight up on its tail fins. Nine. Keep it by your bed at night. Comes in mighty handy. And ten. Take the bulb and battery out and use it as a roomy pocket case for marbles, jacks, money. Yes, sir, gang. The projectoscope is lots of fun. And it comes to you complete with bulb, battery, and film for showing pictures on the wall. To get a projectoscope, do this. Buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then, with your name and address, send 35 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are investigating a space factory revolving in an orbit around the planet Venus. Suddenly, they find themselves locked in a freight-handling chamber room, floating in the middle of the room. Trowbridge has cut the artificial gravity field. We're completely weightless. Well, how are we going to get down to the floor? Huh? Oh, my head. Smoke and rockets, Commander. We fell up, up to the ceiling. There's the floor down there below us. Trowbridge reversed the gravity field. The pull in this room is toward the ceiling. Well, now how are we going to get down to the floor? We'll get down to it all right. The hard way, I'm afraid. Trowbridge will reverse the gravity field from floor to ceiling till he breaks every bone in our bodies. Be sure to listen next Saturday for the exciting story, The Venus Space Factory, when wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! Special bulletin for boys and girls in Springfield, Illinois, Terre Haute, Indiana, and Washington, D.C. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it. The Ralston Rocket. Boys and girls, this is your commander speaking. Help science help you. Give every nickel and dime you can to the American Cancer Society. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, Bela Kovach, and Stephen Robertson. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol. And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC TV station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>